you've just got back from an overseas holiday, a weekend camping trip, or visit to the beach, and you have a bunch of clips remembering the occasion on your GoPro. So what is next? How do you go from that to something you can watch back on your TV, complete with titles and music? I'm David Haig from Australian Video Camera and Creative Content, and I'm here to show you how, without any jargon or technical stuff. As you'll already know, the GoPro stores its files on a micro SD card. The first thing we need to do is get the files from the GoPro onto your computer so we can edit them. Editing, by the way, is just a fancy term for trimming the video and audio so that we only have the bits we want. There are a number of ways of getting these files from the camera onto the computer, and these are by one, directly connecting the camera and computer via a USB cable, two, Many newer computers have a built-in SD card reader, and by placing the SD card from the camera into this, you can copy the files directly. Or three, using an external card reader connected to the computer by the USB cable. I rarely use this method as I find it unreliable at times. What you need to do is leave the card inside the camera, but connect a USB cable to the camera's USB port and the other end to a USB port on the computer. If it's all working okay, the computer will see the camera as an external hard disk, letting you access the files. If this doesn't work, I'd recommend trying one of the next two options. This is probably the simplest method. Simply remove the SD card from the camera, pop it into the slot of the card reader on your computer, and the computer will automatically recognize it. This method is almost identical to the one where your computer has a built-in card reader. The difference is you have to connect the external one to the computer via USB cable before placing the card in the right slot. There are many types of external card reader from simple single slot units to hubs that contain a multitude of external connections. Here is a simple unit you can get for about $10. This one is from Belkin and has slots for the different types of SD cards as well as multiple USB slots, audio, video and network ports and costs about $250 or so. Some basic readers only allow you to insert a full-size SD card. In this case, you'll need a micro SD card adapter to put your GoPro card into and you should have had one of these in the packaging when you purchased the SD card. Whichever method you use, you need to have two copies of the File Explorer open on your computer. To do this, Double click the icon once to open the first and then right click and choose File Explorer to open the second. Once the two windows are open, drag them so that they are side by side and they will need to drag files from one to the other. I recommend creating a new folder on your hard disk for every video project. This way it's easy to keep track and also find things again at a later stage. Also make sure you use names for folders that are meaningful. For example, I have a top level folder for different cameras and then inside that folder a folder for each project shot on that camera with the name of the project, holiday or whatever. I am assuming you understand the basics of navigating, creating and naming folders but if not I recommend this tutorial at the address below. In this shot I have the files on the SD card in the window on the left and the one on the right is my hard disk with the folder open I want to copy the files into. The file system of a GoPro on an SD card is very specific in its structure. The video files you want are in the folder 100 GoPro, which is inside another folder called DCIM, so you need to open that folder to see them. For the sake of this tutorial, the only files we are interested in are the MP4 files. These are the actual high resolution video files that also contain the audio. The other types include photos, raw images, low resolution versions of the video, and thumbnail images. All you need to do is to drag the files from the window in the left camera to the window in the right, your hard disk. Note, this will only copy the files leaving the originals intact. In order to remove the individual files, the bits of video and audio we want, assemble these edited files together and add music and titles, we need to use a video editing program. There are many, many programs available, but here I'll be using DaVinci Resolve for a number of reasons. First, 
it is available for Windows and Mac computers. Second, once the grasp of basics is learned, learning the advanced features of which there are a lot, you can do it at your own pace. And three, it's free. To get resolved for your computer system, you need to go to the Blackmagic Design website and download it. There's quite a large file, so it'll take a bit of time. Once you have the installer file on your hard disk, simply double click to open it and then follow the prompts. After installing DaVinci Resolve, double click its icon to start the program. When the program starts, you'll be shown the project manager. This is my current project manager, but of course, initially, as you don't have any, yours will be empty. To create a new project, click the button to give it a name. Resolve has a couple of ways you can edit your videos, and these are the cut screen and the edit screen. Each has a button you can click along the bottom. The other buttons that are there, I'll explain their functions later. But for now, just click the edit button to bring up that screen. The main parts of the Resolve layout we are interested in for this tutorial are the media pool, the timeline, the source window, and the timeline window. It is now necessary to import into Resolve the files you want to edit. To do this, click the file menu and choose import. And from the drop down menu, select media. You can now navigate to the folder you stored your GoPro files in and select them, either one at a time or control click to select the ones you want and then click OK. The files will be imported and show in the media pool. If you get a message asking about changing the frame rate, at this stage, just click Change. To edit the first file, it needs to be loaded into the source window in order for the parts of the clip we want to keep to be marked. Simply double clip a clip from the media pool to load it into the source window. To choose the start point of the piece you want, click the play arrow to play the video. When you reach the point you want as the start of the segment, click the stop button and then press I for in point. You can fine tune the actual in point using the left and right arrow keys, the point you have selected. To set the out point, press the play button again and when you find the end of the segment, click stop and press the O key or out point. Again, you can fine tune with the arrow keys. You have now successfully marked a segment of the whole clip to be the first one of your video. To add this clip to the timeline, Press F12. The right hand window now shows the content of the timeline. There are other ways to add clips of course, but again, just for the sake of this start tutorial, we'll only be using the F12 key, which adds each new clip to the end of the ones already there. As this is the first, it will place it at the start of the timeline. You'll also notice that the playback window now shows your clip. To add the second clip, repeat the process you just did for the first. Of course, you can extract more than one section of a clip and add it to the timeline. Just set a new in and out point and then again press F12. Often it is useful to add in and out points based on the audio in a clip as against the video. To see the waveform of the audio, click the three little dots at the top right of the source window and from the menu choose show full clip audio waveform. Here you can now see the peak and troughs of the audio. We now have three clips on our timeline. When the video runs, as it goes from one clip to the next, it immediately changes to the next clip. To show this, drag the orange timeline cursor to the beginning of the timeline and press the spacebar for play. Depending on the context of the two clips, you may want to add what is known as a transition, so that the change from one to the next is not as jarring. A good choice is called a dissolve. To add this, click the effects button above the media pool to open the toolbox, and from the video transition section, find the cross dissolve option. Click and drag this onto the line between two clips on the timeline, and a small white box will appear showing the location of the transition. If you now play the timeline, you will see the clip gradually fade from one to the next. Be very sparing with transitions. You want people to notice the footage, not any flashy changes. Check out any of the films from masters like George Lucas, 
Steven Spielberg, Stanley Kubrick and so on, and you'll notice they are used only rarely, if at all. To add a title to a movie is simple. In the toolbox, find the title section and from that, text option. Click and drag this onto the area above your clips on the timeline and a box will appear with a T in it. At the top of the resolve window is a button for inspector. Click this and all the parameters for the title will appear that you can add in the content, change the font, size, color, and so on. In fact, it is good practice to have the inspector open at all times as every single element of the timeline has parameters that can be changed. You can drag the title to the position on the timeline and even extend its length. As it's above the clip in the timeline hierarchy, it will show the text you edited over the top of the video clips. Adding extra audio, such as music, is very much like adding a title, except it is added to an audio track. First, you need to find the audio you want, such as the music track, and add it to the media pool in the same way you added the original clips. You can then edit the audio if you wish, again in the same way as video, by setting in and out points. Before you add the music though, you need to create a track to place it on. To do this, right click on the space below the title Audio 1 and from the pop-up menu, choose Add Track. From the Fly Out menu, select Mono. The track is now created. In order for the music to be added to this track, we need to make it the destination track. This is done by clicking the A2 title. It will then get a red box around it and change to A1, signifying it is the destination track. You can now add the music by pressing F12 as before, or simply dragging the clip to the track as shown. The final thing that needs to be done is to render the timeline. This process takes all the material you've added to the timeline, and creates one file ready for playback on your computer. You can also copy this file to a USB stick or SD card, for example, to give to somebody else, or even upload it to YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, or TikTok. To start the process, click the Deliver button along the bottom of the screen, and next, fill in the details for the video's name and choose where you want it to be saved. Make sure the format is set to MP4 and the entire timeline option is selected, followed by clicking Add to Render Queue. Lastly, click Render All and Resolve will create the new file from the components on the timeline. Depending on the complexity of the timeline and how long the video determines how long this will take, from minutes for a short video to possibly several hours for a longer 4K one. I hope this little video has been of some use to you. If you feel like giving it a like, I'd really appreciate it. And to keep up to date with later videos, don't forget to subscribe. I'm David Haig from Australian Video Camera and Creative Content, and my email address and web details are along the bottom of the screen. Thanks for watching. Happy and safe shooting. Oh, one more thing. If you use a GoPro or other action type camera, I think you'll like my free 60 page e-magazine. You can download it from my website at www.creativecontent.au and select the option in the menu bar.